In this episode of Mastering the Mastermind, I wanted to uh, kind of back up a little bit and talk about um, the history of MIDI controllers. Um, I, I do a, a lot of tech support for our, uh, for our masterminds, and um, I think it would help people to uh, understand a little bit about where we we're coming from with the, uh, the design of the mastermind and, and um, kind of go over some of these basics to kind of uh, give you some, uh, some background on, on how this all you know, how these things work uh, on the uh, sort of the simpler level. Um, so what I've got here is our original mastermind, which is quite a bit different than all the ones that have come after it. Um, this is, you know, much more a uh, sort of a, a, a much earlier design and, and much more similar to the MIDI controllers that have been around since the, uh, the late 80s. And so on one of these uh, controllers, um, Basically, everything is all about presets. And so um, on this controller, we can access 120 presets. What is a preset? Depending on your device, it could be a different thing. On a synthesizer, it's a, you know, a particular sound. Um, on an effect processor, it's yeah, just a collection of settings for your effects. And uh, since the beginning, uh, that's always been sort of the, the primary thing that people used. Um, well, one of the primary things that people have used MIDI for is um, to basically recall presets on their devices. Um, I should note that um, in, in MIDI, they're actually, um, the, the uh, MIDI message that's actually being sent is called a program change. And so we may use um, program change or, and program and preset um, somewhat interchangeably. But basically, you select a preset and it sends a program change message to your devices. And um, the earliest controllers, it, it was as simple as that. Um, you know, you press the two button, you select preset number two, whatever's connected will also um, load up its preset number two. And, um, you know, that's as, as, as simple as it is. It's just sort of a, you know, remote, uh, remote control in a way. So with these controllers, you've got a certain number of actual preset buttons. On the original Mastermind, we had five. Um, and to get at more, we've got the bank buttons. And so we've got one through five here, but if we press bank, now we've got the next set of five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And this is how we get to 100 presets um, with just, you know, uh, eight buttons. Okay, so that's, that's the, the, uh, the most basic possible function. Um, with this and uh, some of the other early controllers, they went a little further and you can get inside this and uh, program it so that, for example, if we select preset two, it might send uh, a program change, you know, five to one device and program change 12 to another. And you can go in and configure that so that you're not just, um, you know, having multiple devices in lockstep. Each, each MIDI device can have a channel and they only listen to the channel that you're, um, you know, only listening to the channel that they're assigned to. And so with a controller like this, you can just say, well, you know, I press three, I want this to send program change one to the first device on MIDI channel one, and I want to send program change 72 to, uh, you know, the, the second MIDI device on MIDI channel two. And so you could do that. Um, this one would allow you to uh, send to four devices. Um, newer devices would let you send on all uh, 16 MIDI channels and have, you know, all of your connected devices, you know, change simultaneously and going to different uh, presets potentially. So our, our current masterminds uh, work the same way. And um, we're showing a mastermind GT16 here, of course, but uh, all of them um, from, the, uh, from the LT, uh, PVCs and the GTs all still have that same bank and preset functionality. Um, on the GTs, the, the green buttons across the bottom are the, are the presets and the banks, just like on the, uh, on the older controllers, will move you up to different banks. Um, it, with the LCDs, it's a little easier to see what's going on, um, that we are, you know, switching from uh, presets, uh, you know, each group of five presets as we press bank up. Um, notice on this, and this is also on every uh, controller, that the preset buttons blink when you uh, select a new bank. And so nothing actually changes until you actually um, press a preset button. So you can kind of browse through your banks and search for the preset you're looking for, and nothing actually changes in the rest of your system 
until you actually go and uh, select a preset. Um, so that's, again, e exactly the same and, and still sort of a, a core feature of this like any other MIDI controller. So now we've got a, a lot more buttons as well. Um, and uh, these blue ones here are instant access buttons. And so they're kind of the, the sort of the next level of, of MIDI controller. And this was, uh, these were introduced uh, somewhere along the line in the, uh, in the history of, of uh, other controllers where people said, well, you know, it's great to have presets and all that, but what, do I, what if I want to just, you know, control one single thing instead of like changing every parameter on every device that I have at the same time? Um, so, you know, any of these instant access buttons could be assigned to, you know, say, change your modulation effect from a fast to a slow rate. Um, and specifically, in the way it's set up right now, if you have a, a loop switcher like our uh, Effect Gizmo or Mini Effect Gizmo, you know, the idea with that is you plug in your pedals into that box and, you know, a preset would, would select, you know, well, I want pedals number, you know, 2, 7, and 12 turned on. Um, and preset the next preset would, you know, turn on pedals 5 and 6, you know, or whatever, you know, doing combinations of pedals where instant access buttons would allow you to turn on individual pedals um, by themselves. And so effectively giving you kind of a, a virtual pedal board uh, type uh, effect. And so um, that's, you know, you know, really a, a powerful thing. You can, um, you know, kind of have your, your main presets, um, you know, you select and then you can kind of stay in that preset, kind of setting it up perhaps as a, uh, you know, in, in some effect processes, they call it a scene where you have kind of your virtual uh, effect or your virtual pedal board. And then, you know, you may want to just do some small tweaks and just turn on individual pedals or turn them off at any particular time. Um, this works not only with our loop switchers like this, but also some of the, the uh, multi-effect processors by, um, you know, Fractal, Kemper, Line 6. A lot of those work really well where you may select a particular preset and then you can assign these buttons to turn on your, you know, your delay, delay effect or reverb effect, drive, whatever. And so now the nice thing about this also is that you can um, use these two button types together. So we'll go back to the first bank and select preset 1. And um, depending on your device and depending on how it's set up, um, but certainly the way things are set up out of the box, you can um, program IAs to actually uh, turn on or turn off as you switch presets. So it becomes part of the, the preset. And so let's say we've, you know, we've got our pedals plugged into our effect gizmo here, and you can just uh, go in here and say, well, I want, for, for preset one, I want loops four, six, and seven to turn on automatically. And you see up here, we've got uh, a page and IA store button. And um, well, what it does when you press it, it switches button pages. And that's, the, that'll be our next video. But when you hold it for two seconds, it becomes a store button. And you'll see on this main screen, it says stored. And so now it remembers that on preset one, I want four, six, and seven to turn on. Now I switch over to preset two. And let's say I just want pre, uh, loops one and five on, and I hold and store that. And so this is a really quick way to set up um, presets. And you can see as I do this, it automatically switches these uh, these IA buttons. And um, you know, and you can always go in and change them. Um, it won't remember the change um, unless you unless you hold the IA store button. But you can kind of you know, have what, the way you want the preset to work, and then you can go in and, and make overrides, and then as you, you know, switch and then come back, it, it uh, goes back to the, the way it was last saved. And so there's one other feature I want to talk about today, and it's called IA Mode. And you'll see you've got an IA Mode button right here, and um, what it does is it takes any button that is not already an IA button, that is um, not one of these blue ones here, and it converts it into an IA button. So when I press this, um, well, these ones change. Um, we could have an option to, uh, to change every one of the buttons except the IA mode button itself. And um, these are two separate modes and we can you know, go in here and you'll notice we have more loops um, because the, uh, this is set up to control an effect gizmo which has 12 loops. And so this is how we get at uh, more features and I can 
you know, turn on these loops and, you know, I go in and out of IA mode, it remembers those things. And these are exactly the same as all the other buttons, and so we can program them uh, like the others. Um, and so why do we want this? Um, the idea is that, you know, again, with presets kind of being a uh, sort of a main um, sort of scene that you might want to switch for a particular song or part of a song, and you may want to stay in that uh, scene, but you want to have individual access to all of your separate effects or, you know, effect parameters, you know, you can go into a sort of a more of a full uh, virtual pedal board mode where you're only looking at your, your individual effects that you turn on and off. And so this is a, this is a um, you know, an early function that added sort of more capability to a limited amount of buttons. And um, in, the, in the next video, we're going to talk about button pages, which is more uh, advanced. But these two features can um, interact with each other and, and, and interoperate with each other. So you can, um, once you've learned about both IA mode and uh, button pages, that you can uh, choose which one's better for you. The GTs start with, uh, or, or come out of the box with IA mode pre-configured, as you can see. The PBCs and the LTs do not um, because of their, uh, you know, even more limited button count. But if you want to enable it, you can. And when using uh, the, the editor software for any of the masterminds or the built-in editing on the GT, you can um, specify you know, which buttons are which type and which one of them have both an IA function and a, uh, an, another function. And so you're, this configuration is not at all fixed and you can um, you know, change it however you like. Okay, well that's all for this week's video. Um, please remember to like and subscribe. We're gonna keep making these videos, um, hopefully on a weekly basis. Um, if you have questions or suggestions on topics you'd like us to address, please put them in the comments below. Thanks very much.